How are you going? Now, if you aren't Australian, you probably don't know who this guy is. But for Aussies, no other animal strikes fear into the heart quite like the magpie. The magpie is a very intelligent bird, so intelligent it has always beat me in Scrabble. It is also very observant and watches all the horrible things us humans do throughout the year. And then, in September, the cunning magpie decides it's had enough of our shit and that it's going to get revenge. It's normally a sure sign that spring has well and truly sprung. Magpies swooping pedestrians and bike riders on the streets of Sydney. Its revenge is so brutal that it makes primetime news. No other animal systematically attacks and torments people like the magpie. It doesn't matter whether you are a 90-year-old woman returning home from your weekly bingo game or a schoolboy walking home, the magpie will chase you for a kilometre, shit on your new shirt and make sure you don't leave your house until October. And you know what? I kind of respect its temper. If more animals behaved like the vengeful magpie, the world would probably be a better place. To my surprise, a month before September, I noticed that we had a friendly gang of magpies hanging around in our yard, and I conceived a wild idea. If I could befriend the magpies before they turned their backs on me, or even train them, then I could avoid a month of fear and embarrassment, and I might be able to harness their infamy. If everyone fears the magpie, and I control the magpies, then everyone would fear me. Now, I don't really have the greatest plan, but I reckon that if I seduce the magpie with a wide range of bread, and I ring this bell every time it eats, I can get it to associate this annoying noise with myself, food and happiness. I already know it works on humans. At first it was tough. The magpies didn't really want anything to do with me or the bell. But when I persisted, I noticed that one of them, this little maverick, let's call him Zuko, was pretty comfortable, so I figured I would target him with the sourdough bread. At first, Zuko was really scared of me and the bell, and really didn't want to get in reach of me. Or eat his bread anywhere near me. But, after trying a couple of times, he was more comfortable and started to trust me a bit more. Every morning, he would just be chilling out, waiting outside the door for his feed. Although, his mates, let's call them the T-Birds, still didn't trust me. I really wish I could speak Bird. Although he is probably telling me to stop fucking ringing this bell. Eventually, Zuko started hanging around a lot more. And one of his mates started to trust me as well. And I reckon I had got them to associate me with bread, but I wasn't sure about the bell. They really seemed to still hate it. Wait guys, chill out. I'll give you all bread, okay? I felt a bit bad about creating a bit of conflict in the group, and then I remembered that birds. Word must have spread around that some idiot was giving out free bread, and some other boys decided to crash the party. I have no idea why the magpies just run away from the smaller lorikeets. They would definitely beat them in a fight. Although maybe it's because they hop around like freaks, or maybe the hierarchy of beauty applies to the animal kingdom as well. And they just make room for the prettier animals. Regardless, they all seem to hate the bell. Eventually, I had every bird in the neighbourhood hanging around in my yard, chilling around for a free feed. And the lorikeets were still the top dogs. And the magpies had to resort to some sneaky tactics, aided by myself, to get some food. Do it.
And even though I had enough bread for all the birds, an all-out gang war broke out with my love and bread at the center. More birds rocked up and there was an obvious pecking order in the bird kingdom, in which the magpies were at the bottom, followed by the beautiful but dumber lorikeets who flashed their colours in order to get a free feed. Then the kookaburra, who gets on everyone's good side by laughing at everything you have to say. Mate, what are you laughing about? And finally, the giant fucking king of the birds, the crested cockatoo. It seems as though the magpie had lost the fight for bread, but I realised they had one thing on their side, their intelligence. Bread's back on the menu, boys. Out of all the birds that were in my yard, they were the only bird that learnt that me ringing this annoying bell meant that dinner was served, and they were first to eat every single time. And you know, I never managed to train them to attack people or to ride them like a scene from Lord of the Rings. But I did learn a couple of things. Firstly, you really don't need a vacuum cleaner when you have a magpie around. Uh, dude, uh, I know like you're cool and all, but I, I really don't think you should be in my house. What do you, although you are eating scraps on the floor, actually, this is a great idea. And the reason they swoop everybody is because you give all your fucking bread to the prettier birds. You know, I kept my magpies nice and full happy with that? and they didn't swoop me once in the month of September. If you liked that video, subscribe and share it around. You know, you finally have an excuse to ring up that auntie you haven't spoken to in three years. You can say like, uh, hey, there's, there's this guy who made a video on the internet with um, birds. You know, you two will be best friends again.